Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again, back with another review video for you. This one is one that I've been anxiously anticipating making ever since we started getting everything set up. Uh, sorry this video took so long to get out. I've actually been sick with strep for the last week and I'm actually struggling to get through this intro right now. So with that, join me as we take a look at the Kira. Starting as always with construction and design, the Kira is a beautiful mechanical keyboard from Input Club, a company founded by a group of mechanical keyboard enthusiasts. The Kira features a 96 key condensed layout that gives you the functionality of a standard size board with a full number pad and function keys in the form factor that won't take up much of your desk. I really like this design because I personally use the 10 key quite often, but I really like the look and feel of smaller keyboards. In terms of quality, the Kira is top notch. It's built like a tank and has the weight to match. Even though the board has a translucent plastic casing, make no mistake, this thing is tough. There's literally zero flex when mashing down on the keys. The Kira is available in two varieties, a plastic version, which you'll see here, and a fully aluminum CNC framed model that will run you about 80 bucks more. Aesthetically, the Kira is one of the best looking keyboards that I've ever seen. I like that it combines the more enthusiast look with a heavy dose of RGB goodness. It's got clean lines and absolutely no intrusive branding to speak of. No doubt its most striking feature visually is the clear casing on the underside of the board. Virtually the entire underside is translucent, creating a nice underglow effect that looks great from any angle. I also think the angular transition between the casing on the side of the board gives it some nice character. In terms of lighting, the Kira does have per-key RGB illumination, but there are some tricks to it. The Kira is fully open source and requires no software to function. However, you can download their configurator to further customize all aspects of the keyboard from lighting, layout, macros, and more. Just keep in mind, if you do choose to go the configurator route, there is some more advanced stuff there than your typical companion software. Still, if you do have coding experience or you want to get in deep with your new keyboard, the possibilities are endless. Another plus here is that once your keyboard is configured the way you want it, you won't need to run any software in the background because it's all ran off the keyboard. Now, for those of us that can't really be bothered with such things, there are a slew of easy to use commands programmed right into the board from the get go. And you can use these to change the lighting, animations, as well as a bunch of other useful functions like media controls. The Kira is an enthusiast keyboard, and as you might expect, it's offered with switches to match. The Kira is offered in Hakko Clear, True, and Violet, Novel Keys Box Royal and Pale Blue, Kaihua Box Reds, and Cherry MX Blues and Browns. The Kira also gives you the ability to hot swap your switches up to the recommended limit of 100 times, so you can play around with these switches to find the layout that's right for you, or mix and match and have a complete keyboard that's all your own. The Kono store also offers a switch tester with all of the switches available on this board for 10 bucks that I highly recommend you guys pick up before making your purchase if you're not 100% sure which one of these switches you might like. I got my Kira with Hakko Clears. They're incredibly solid with no wobble whatsoever and it's also worth mentioning that the stabilizers are phenomenal on this board. There's no rattling or loud acoustic pinging creating a great typing experience. So you guys can hear what I'm talking about for yourselves, here is a quick sound test. The keycaps on the Kira are PBT die sublimated and they give you two varieties, a white and gray keycap both with black characters. You also get four sets of colored accent keycaps in orange, blue, pink, and purple that you can use to personalize the look of the board to better tie into your setup or you can mix and match and create a look however you like. The keycaps feel great and the font is clean and simple. The only real drawback for me on the caps is that the characters aren't translucent. With all the RGB going on in this board, I think this will ultimately come down to your personal preference as you can still make out the keys in the dark thanks to the white keycaps letting a little bit of the light shine through. The white keycaps do let a lot of the light reflect around them, creating a nice ambient glow which isn't too in your face, and ultimately I think that's what they were going with here, especially since most of the enthusiast crowd doesn't need to look down at the characters to type, but still you could always pick up a different set of caps later if you want to have the characters illuminated. The underside of the keyboard features that nice translucent casing which we talked about earlier and has two very large rubberized pads that run the entire length of the board so they keep it very firmly in place. 
There are no extendable legs on this keyboard, so you're locked into the position it comes in without using any third party accessories, but it does come at a very ergonomically friendly angle. The Kira uses a detachable USB-C cable, which is always nice, especially since the compact nature of this board makes it suitable for both at-home use and on-the-go typing. My only real gripe here is that the cable is a fairly basic rubberized cable, and for a board of this quality, I would have liked to have had a little bit nicer cable included. And speaking of portability, the Kira comes with a nice heavy-duty carrying case, and it's rigid enough to protect the keyboard and has ample room for storing your accessories. This is a very welcomed inclusion that you don't see very often, and with a board as nice as the Kira, it really does deserve a safe place for transport. After using this keyboard over a week, the only real negatives for me are the non-translucent keys, if that's your preference, and the less than intuitive configurator, which in my eyes is really very easily overshadowed by the slew of positives that this board has. From the unwavering quality to the stunning design and functionality, the Kira has quickly become my favorite keyboard to date. It looks great in any setup and the hot swappable switches mean that this is a board that you can make 100% your own with new caps and switches to fit any preference. With a starting price of $179.99, the Kira isn't cheap, but compared to many keyboards of a similar price, the quality of this board just cannot be matched. Input Club clearly knocked it out of the park with this board, and it's obvious that it was built by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. If you're looking for something new to grace your desk, there simply isn't any application in which the Kira isn't an exceptional choice. Well, that's it for the video, guys. As always, let me know in the comments what you think about the Kira, and of course, give the video a like to show your support. I can't really talk that much anymore. So with that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.